Proverbs chapter 16, and um, let me read verses 1, verses 3, and then verse 9. Verses 1 says, the plan of a man's heart, I mean the plans of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from God. Verse 3 says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Then verse 9 says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Man, good stuff, good stuff. Let me talk a little bit about um, starting strong and finishing strong. Musicians, thank you all. Let me just pray and then we're going to... Lord, you're wonderful, God, as we just um, walk through this presentation that I want to share with this congregation that you've entrusted me to lead. Um, let us begin the year well, Lord, and just set some good precedent so we can go forth and be who you would have us to be. So, Lord, we love you this morning. We magnify you. We worship you. We adore you. Speak through me, to me, to your people. Um, even though this is not a traditional first Sunday message, but open our hearts to hear, and I'm praying that somebody would be encouraged to be better and to do different. So we give our hearts to you. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor real quick. Thank you all so much. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, start strong, stay strong, then finish strong. I guess I forgot to put stay strong up there, but it's okay. Stay strong is going to come in the middle of the year when I'm doing my sanity checks. One more time. Say start strong. Stay strong, stay strong, and then say finish strong. Hey Amen. As we embark on a new year, um, to kind of set foundation so we can make sure that we accomplish what we said we're going to do. And I'm not only talking from a uh, ministerial perspective, because as a church, we plan, as a church, we strategize, as a church, we do all the things that we need to do. But the Lord just laid it on my heart this morning to, to deviate from that a little bit and try to encourage those of you that may be in business, those of you that maybe have dreams and aspirations to start a business, those of you that might have just a desire to just change course this year, to just give you some pointers and give you some things that will help you to encourage you along the way. And I want to begin uh, by just kind of going to this, is that it's, it's difficult to rebound from a bad start. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Here's what we do. We, we, we set goals. We set resolutions at the first of the year when we said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then we set out to do it. But then February comes around and we haven't done much anything of what we said we're going to do. Then we find ourselves October, November, December, and we've missed it and we try to recover. And I'm standing before you to say it's difficult to do in the last three months of the year, what we should have been doing individually all year long. It's difficult to rebound from a bad start. So what I want to do this morning is just take a few minutes to challenge you to, to, to put some things in place to begin well, to start well, so when you look back over the course of your life or look back over the course of this year, you're going to notice that you have made some tremendous changes and things are going to be different. I don't know if you can see that well. I guess you can't see it well, so I'll read it for you. And then um, we'll have, make this slide available for those of you that may want it. Here's what this thing says. The first hundred day days of the year matter greatly. If you want December of next year to look better than December um, of last year, the first hundred days will decide that. Now, here's the challenge I'm making this morning. Come on, say 100 days. Say it against 100 days. 100 days. I'm challenging you, and I'm laying out some things in front of you to challenge you that today is day one. Whatever you set out to do, be consistent from now until the next 100 days doing what you said you're going to do, and the likelihood of you finishing strong is very high. Okay? You've heard it said before that it takes 21 days to change bad habits. Um, some people say it takes 90 days. There's nothing magic or nothing, you know, scientific about 100 days. It's just a period of time to say go to first quarter and go a little past that and see if you can be consistent and if you can establish a pattern of consistency. I want to say to you, by the time you get to December, you're going to see things 
are going to look completely different. Now, what that one says is that comebacks, comebacks are, are rare. It's not the norm. You've probably seen this with sports teams. If you know of a sports team that started off the year playing football or in the football season, and the year has not gone well, the likelihood of them making the playoffs is very... Yeah, you, you get it, exactly. It's not that you can change the last three games or the last four games and expect things to turn around. So the likelihood of comeback is extremely rare. The good news is, is that if we can start the year off well, odds are that we will finish the year well, okay? So come on, say start strong, start strong. so you can finish strong. Okay, so here's the thing. So what you do, what we do in the first 100 days of the year. So what should we do, let me say, in the first 100 day days that will transform what the remainder of the year look like, okay? So I want to talk about four top priorities that I want to challenge you to set. And as you talk about these four top priorities, we're going to flesh this out throughout the remainder of the presentation so we can walk through this, okay? So number one, say get away. Get away. I need y'all to talk to me. Come on, say get away. Get away. Here's what that says. Spend time with your family. We'll flesh that out in a little while. Very, very important thing, okay? The second thing, evaluate. Come on, say evaluate. evaluate. A lot of us don't like to do this, but I'll talk about that when we get to that step in a little while. Very, 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 very important step if we're going to get to where we need to go. Um, say plan. plan. Say it again. Say plan. plan. Okay, very, very important. Um, then we're going to talk about that. And then lastly, do. Come on, say it. Yeah, so this is a little different. So let me repeat. Say get away, get away. Evaluate, evaluate, plan, plan. and then do. do. So let's walk through this. Let's kind of walk through these things so we can get. So if you're going to set a New Year's resolution, here's my first challenge as we talk about starting strong and finishing strong. The first thing I want to challenge you to do is set good New Year's, and listen to the term, family resolutions. Family resolution, okay? We say this in church. God first, family, then the job, and then church, right? But family, for a lot of us, ends up way down on the bottom of the list. Begin the year by moving your family up. Y'all got quiet. Y'all must not like your family. Today's day one, so every Sunday I normally leave my house like around 5.30 in the morning or 5 in the morning, and Katani's normally slip, sleep, sleep. So this morning I leaned over and I gave her a big wet one right here. Yeah, I can tell y'all what she did. But, um, <laughs> but, 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 but I have to practice what I preach, right? So here's my covenant. I'm going to, for the next, and I'm saying this publicly for accountability, for this year, I'm going to covenant not to leave the house when she's home without giving her a big wet one. I want her to know where she stands in my life. Family is important. Are you guys hearing me? Okay. So make sure you put family first. So here's some things I want you to walk through. So commit, number one, commit to a bi-weekly date night with your spouse. Okay. What that means, at least twice a month... Spend some time, if you're, you're a young couple and you have children at home, get you a babysitter and then have them watch the baby, okay? For those of you that have in-laws and you don't like them, this is a chance to get to like them. For those of you that have moms here, get somebody to watch those kiddos and you and your spouse get away at least twice a month, all right? Now, don't only have her or him do things that you like to do. Make sure you share with each other and you're doing these things together. Does that make sense? Bi-weekly, here's the thing. And then for one day, one day a week, one day a week, I want to challenge you, one day a week, make it your day of Sabbath. Let's get back to that. One day a week, shut everything down and just you and God. Kind of get what I'm saying? If you're going to spend time with your family, give God his. Are you with me? And, and, and I'm not saying stay home and watch Oprah all day and zone out. Not saying that. Or watch sports all day. And, no, 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 no. This is Sabbath. Y'all already, I don't like you, preacher. Yeah. <laughs> okay, get a day of rest 
where you allow God to be God and give him his. Now, here's the thing. Spend extra one-on-one -on -one time with your children. Now, this is going to be costly and it could be expensive because if you got 10 kids, that's your problem. Should have only had one, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, but here's what you do. Here's what you do. Take your kids and once a month, give each child individual time with you. Here's where this come real to me, right? Um, Y'all know my youngest, Edward, lives at home with me. And Eddie chooses the absolute worst time to want my attention. He does. I'll be in my office studying, and then he comes and sits on the floor, and I kind of look at him because I have a bad attitude because you're like disturbing my studying. You kind of get what I'm saying? So I'm saying to him, kid, can you just schedule time? Call Kim or somebody and schedule. <laughs> no. But, but for me now, I have two kids at home. That's Edward and Veronica. I am committing once a month that each one of them is going to get an hour of interrupted time where they can date dad. Uninterrupted. Thank you. Un in thank you, y'all. Uninterrupted time where it's just me and them. Are you hearing me? Very, very important because here's what happens, especially for those of us in ministry. The church can consume you. It can occupy your time. And when the church is gone and your children are gone, you have nothing less. Family is very very important. So date those kids. Are you with me? Very, very important to do that. Here's the other thing. And then, then, then make, make your commitment clear. And this is a suggestion I want to put out there. Put some sort of a, contra a contract together to let your kids, let your spouse know that I'm committing this year to put you number one and hold me accountable for what I said I'm going to do. Can you guys do that? Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so number one, set a family priority. Here's the second thing. Take a look back. This is tough. Say look back. Look back. Come on again. Say look back. Look back. One more time. Now everybody got to say this. Say look back. Look back. Most, most of us when we, you're running track or doing sports or something, they say never look behind. But if you are in business, if you want to excel in life, if you want to get ahead in ministry or wherever it is God has called you, looking back is very, very important, okay? So I'm going to walk through this so we can get and understand what that's saying. Here's what this slide says. You never know where you're going until you understand where you came from. The reason a lot of us are still broke today is we've never looked back and processed while we were broke yesterday to change some things. The reason of us, the reason a lot of us have gone through a lot of marital challenges and problems and we still have it today is we've never taken the time to look back to find out where we blew it or what was wrong and make the adjustments so we can go into the new year differently. Time to look back, right? Come on, say look back. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. You're going to evaluate yourself. Begin, begin by this. What unconfessed sin do I have in my life? Let me read these scriptures because you can't see them well. Romans chapter 3 says this. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let me tell you what that means. I have sinned. Kitani has sinned. Eddie has sinned. Veronica has sinned. We all have shortfalls and you too have a shortcoming in your life. Don't fool yourself into saying not me. Come on, y'all. Amen. Okay, so begin there, begin there. This is what um, Romans says, Proverbs says this, whoever conceals his transgression will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Here's what James says, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And this says the effectual prayer of a righteous person availeth much, it is powerful and it works. Now don't make this mistake. This is where James comes in. You offended your spouse, you offended somebody, and here's what you do. Well, it's between me and God. No. Yes, it's between you and God, but you need to go confess. I got real quiet. You got to go and confess, all right, to make it right so that God can be glorified in that. Very, very important that we do that. Um, look at this next one. Evaluate yourself, and here's what you ask yourself now. What did I do well last year? Okay? A lot of us have successes. We did some things well. Take a moment to find out what you did well. And a mentor of mine said this to me. If you did something well and you're good at doing it, amplify it this new year. 
because it's obviously an area of strength in your life. Does this make sense? So if you have a list of things that you find that you do well that help you succeed, take a moment to amplify them and watch how you can success can succeed even better. Number three says, what area did I struggle in last year? Okay? Be honest with yourself. Where did I fail? Where did I blow it? Where did I mess up? What did I not do well? Identify those things and listen to what I'm going to say. Quit trying to do them going into the new year. Find a fix for it before you even progress. Okay? Here's what this other one said. What relationships in my church, my family, my community seem to suffer um, through the most strain last year? Here's what the English version of that said. Who did I not like? <laughs> or who did not like me? Or who did I have challenges with, right? Let me switch gears and talk to the church for a while and talk to Christians. Here's what Corinthians says in Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, he's what kind of a creation? New. What kind of a creation? New. Now listen to this. The old has what? Gone. And the new has come, right? And then here's what the next verse says. All this is, is from God who um, through Christ Jesus has reconciled us to himself. And now he has gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself. Not counting people's transgressions or sin against them. And then he's now entrusting us with the message of reconciliation. The last verse says, as a result, we are Christ's ambassadors, adore God as though God was making his appeal to us. Here's a short version of what that means. We messed up. God came down and redeemed us. He forgave us. And he expects us to do the same thing for others. Does that make sense? You guys are tracking with me. So fix it, right? So ask some questions. Who have I been avoiding? What drains you when you spend, um, who drains me when I spend time? Who do I need to apologize to? Here's a scripture that talks about that. And then if we're going to do this thing right, here's what you got to go home to do today. Go make the tough phone call. Yeah. Thought New Year was going to be easy, huh? <laughs> go make the tough phone call, okay? Here's another one. Evaluate after you evaluate yourself. Here's a short of this. Evaluate your circle of influence. Let me say this this way and I'm going to move on. Everybody that's around you are not for you. All right? If they don't align with your life's mission, your life track, your life purpose, your life vision, you might need to do some snipping or else those same people are going to do the same thing they did. Here's a metaphor. We say crab in a bucket. The moment you get to the top, they're going to grab that leg. So you better cut them off so they can't grow. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Is this making sense, okay? So evaluate your circle of influence. Um, evaluate your personal endeavors, okay? If you are a business owner, if you have a job, or if you're in school, or if you're in ministry, evaluate what you're doing so you can position yourself to succeed even better moving forward, okay? So deal with that. What did I do well last year as you evaluate that? Um, what parts of my life uh, mission statement did you struggle with the most? Let me just take two seconds to do this. If you don't have a life mission statement, get one. Let me tell you what that means. Why am I here and what does God want me to accomplish in life? So know your reason for being. Does this make sense, guys? If you don't have one, get one, okay? And then as you look ahead into the near, what are some potential growth areas that you can capitalize upon. What is it, where is it that I need to grow so I can be better? And as I look ahead to the new year, what are some potential pitfalls that could be coming? So know the dangers, okay? If Shaniqua caused you problems last year, know that. Quit hanging out with her. Does this make sense? Are you guys tracking with me? So know your failures. If your failure is a certain thing, if it's a certain place, if it's a certain situation, if it's a certain person, know that so you don't position yourself in the same place to stay to fall. That's the first 100 days, so mark that. Then here's the other one, plan ahead. Me, the most frustrating thing for me to hear as a pastor is to see seniors in their senior life having lived life 
and can't enjoy the remainder of their life. That's frustrating. Are you with me? Plan ahead. Quit living in a now. Here, here's a quote that you're going to probably hear me say for the remainder of this year. Abraham Lincoln said this. If you give me six hours to chop down a, three, a tree, I will spend the first three sharpening my axe. First four. I can't read this morning. First four sharpening my axe. That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> I, I tested Eddie. I said, Eddie, look at this and tell me what it says. What's the first thing you see when you said this? He says, well, um, it's going to take him time to cut down the tree. It's going to take two hours to cut down the tree. I said, don't miss the four-hour part preparing. The more you plan, the more you prepare, the less time you spend working. Are you with me? Does this make sense? Okay. So we're almost there. Kind of, so here's the thing. Planning then is about sharpening your axe. Without pre effective preparation, our year is doomed to fail from the beginning. So if we're going to take the first 100 days, take a third of that or even a, a portion of that and spend time planning out the remainder of the year before you go do. Sit down and plan. So here's your, your first Sabbath assignment. What am I going to do this year? What does God want me to do this year? Take a day, unplug, take a day, and figure that out. Take the time sharpening your axe before you go do, okay? Establish goals. And I always say this when you're going to set goals. Start with the end in mind. Are you hearing me? Start with the end in mind. And then back up and begin, okay? So here's the question you ask yourself. Where do I want to be December 31st, 2017? What do I want to have accomplished? What do I want to have done? Have that figured out. And then put plans in place to get it done. Does this make sense, guys? I want you all to track with me with this. We're moving through. So develop goals to get you where you want to be at the end of the year. So you must start planning to make that happen so you can get there. So here's your goal. You guys all know the smart goals. Be specific, okay? Be measurable, be attainable, be relevant or realistic, and be type sensitive. Don't be living in the hood and talk about my goal is I'm going to have a million dollar house. No. The first goal is get out the hood. Can I be honest here? All right. Don't, don't say, you know, you, you, you don't have a dime, we don't have anything, and your first goal is I'm going to be the president of the United States. No. Be realistic, be attainable, and be time sensitive. Remember with me, this goal, you only have one year to do it, not a lifetime. So I'm not saying set lifetime goals. One year. And the first hundred days is going to develop the patterns to help you get to where you want to go. Does this make sense, church? Are you with me? And then once you set your goals, yeah, can't watch TV. <laughs> go to work. You must work it to completion. You must develop it to get to where you need to go. So here's the thing. You have critical work to do the next hundred days and time to get started. Let me read these verses. These are good verses. Proverbs 10 says this. Lazy hands makes for poverty, but diligent hands brings wealth. Here's what the next one says in Proverbs 12. The lazy do not um, roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. Here's what the last one said. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He's too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. <laughs> That's lazy. I'm hungry, but I can't pick the fork up. <laughs> That's lazy. Are you with me? So let's not be guilty of that, okay? Grace me on this one, okay? I want us to kind of get to, to where we need to go. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. That's important, though. Y'all got it, though. After you go to work, keep the momentum going. You can't start strong and fall off on it. You get it. I don't need to say nothing else, right? Keep the momentum going to make it all the way to the end. 
So here's some scriptures um, that talks about that. Let me just read a couple of these, and then we're going to press through. It says, but the one who endures, the middle one, Matthew, the ones who endure to the end will be saved. Look at what James says. Blessed is the man or the person who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test of time, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. True story. I'm not saying this to brag or to boast or any of that kind of stuff. Um, when I was in high school, when I was in the military, even in college, I could not do a single push-up. Just weak, weak upper body strength. Um, Troy and I would go to the gym, and Troy would, you know, show off in the gym, putting like, you know, two of those big round things on the end, uh, the 45-pounders, and come on, G, come on. And then I get that, said, take them off, just give me the bar. You know? <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Weak upper body strength. Just, just could not do it. And, and, and I got to the place where, you know, um, I think we went on a retreat a couple of years ago, and I was in a room with you and Robert Matthews, and I said to you guys, hey, man, I'm committed to doing push-ups every day. And they said, why? Because as a kid, I always had this weak upper body strength. And in the room, I said, let me do 30 real quick. You can't do 30. Watch me. Bam, 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 bam. And I was like, yeah. Who's the man now? Right? Yeah. So, so um, yesterday, Troy and I, or a couple of days ago, Troy and I and John were in the back room, and they had some stuff to move. And um, I grabbed one with one arm, and I grabbed the other with the other one, and Troy would have said, why don't you just pick up both of them if you think you're that bad? I picked them up. I did. I said, let me see you do it. And he couldn't. Right? And, and I, said, I said, I can give you 50 push-ups right now without stopping. I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I just feel good about myself. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but my point was this. I was consistent in what I was doing. I tried to give Jeff Armstrong to train me, but I'm not ready to die yet. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get him engaging. But every single morning I get out of bed and I get on the ground. You kind of get what I'm saying? Get on the ground and I do what I need to do. Consistency because I am committed to the work. You cannot give up. That's another scripture, okay? So here's the thing. Keep Doing the work. That's what I'm saying to my boys. All right? Keep doing the work. You cannot give up. Focus on what matters the most. Life is filled with distractions, guys. The next 100 days are going to be filled with distraction. Focus on what matters the most and prepare for the rough patches. Prepare for the rough patches. Prepare for the rough patches. I put this up here and I'm going to say it and we're going to come back and talk about it next week. Every person in here should have at a minimum $1,000 emergency fund in your bank accounts. At a minimum. If you don't, you're not ready for the rough patches. Because what happens when crisis comes, you're forced to do abnormal things because you weren't prepared for your future. So here's a challenge I'm going to give every person here as a practicum. By the end of 100 days, if you don't already have it, be disciplined enough to have at least $1,000 in your emergency fund account. Please hear what I'm saying. Emergency fund. Are you guys getting that? Come on, say emergency fund. Emergency fund. Not hair count. Oh, I didn't get paid, paid till Monday. I need to get my hair done. Oh, I got an emergency fund. No. <laughs> okay, this is not a nail account. <laughs> All right? You can't, it's not a movie account. It's the fridge broke down and I got to fix it. Are you with me? I'm saying this for Eddie. Is my car need four tires and I don't need to borrow money from daddy? <laughs> You get what I'm saying, okay? Emergency of account. And I'm challenging you this first 100 days of the year to start strong, finish strong. If you do it, you, if you do it for the first 100 years, your days, you'd be amazed at what the rest of your year is going to be. Come on, say, start strong. Start strong. Stay, strong. Stay strong. Finish strong. Finish strong. Bow your heads with me. Musicians, come to the platform. Lord, you're a wonderful God. I just want to encourage our congregation this morning. I just want to encourage this body. I know this is abnormal, but we just want to encourage them 
that the race is never to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. And the challenge, Lord, is to run with patience the race that's set before us. With our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So God, as we commence this year, as we're at the beginning of this year, I am praying for every person in here that if there's one that don't have a relationship with you, if there's one here that have not said yes to you, God, that you would draw them to a relationship, God. Let it, the year begin with that, God first, then family. Then they can go down from there. So we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for another year. We thank you for keeping us alive. We thank you for sustaining us. We thank you for having us under the sound of your breath, God. So we submit ourselves to you. We give 2017 to you. We reflect on 2016 as we learn the lessons from it. But we covenant not to do the same thing going forward. So thank you for being God. We give ourselves to you. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen.